In this lecture, we want to look at our last method for solving quadratic equations. And this is using the quadratic formula. Some of you might already have this memorized. Those of you who don't, you're going to need to do so so that you have it for the final exam and for any math courses going forward. You need to start with your quadratic equation in standard form. That means it's equal to zero. Once you have that, the quadratic formula says that x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c all over two times a. Now, memorizing, not something we do a lot of anymore. You could Google the quadratic formula song, find people singing it, that helps. They don't pay me enough to sing and you pay far too much to hear me sing. So I'm not gonna sing the song for you, but you could look that up probably on YouTube somewhere. And if you can't find it, maybe make your own. Let's solve an equation using the quadratic formula. So first of all, we see that it has to be equal to zero. So let's rewrite this equation. Now, when it's equal to zero, we can find the values of A, B, and C. Why don't you fill them in? We see that A is three, B is negative seven, and C is one. If you don't have this formula memorized, every time you use it, write it down. X equals the opposite of B, plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four times A times C, all over two times A. Now we can just substitute in our values for A, B, and C. The opposite of B, well, we see that B is negative seven. That means the negative of negative seven plus or minus the square root of b squared, I'm going to suggest you better have that in brackets. You'd have a different answer if it wasn't. Minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Now we just need to simplify all of that. So we see the opposite of b is positive 7 b squared, a times, four times a times c is 12, all over six. And we have seven plus or minus 49 minus 12, that's 37. That's a prime number. It can't be simplified any further. If you're asked to write your answers separated by a comma, you still have two solutions here. So lots for you to practice. Why don't we do one of them together? Solve using the quadratic formula. What's the first step? Yeah, the equation has to equal zero. In this case, it doesn't matter whether I have positive x squared or not. So why don't we add x squared to both sides? and subtract three from both sides. Now we see that a equals one, b equals four, c equals negative three. Write the formula from memory. x equals the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of, b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. I would say there are two mistakes people make here. One, they don't make the equation equal to 0. So make sure your equation is equal to 0. And two, they don't memorize the formula. 
Those two pieces shouldn't be difficult if you put some time in. All right, let's fill in our numbers. X equals the opposite of B plus or minus B squared. I don't need brackets this time, why not? Because B is positive. Minus four times A times C all over two times A. Now we just need to simplify this. Four squared is 16 plus 12 all over two. Square root of 28 can be simplified. We did that recently, didn't we? I hope you were able to simplify the square root of 28 to two root seven, but now you should notice that two is a common factor. We can divide both terms in the numerator by two, negative four divided by two, two root seven divided by two. And that allows me to simplify this to negative two plus or minus the root of seven. Make sure you practice using that quadratic formula. Make sure you have it memorized.